So, gravitas. It's a Roman virtue. It was one of the key Roman virtues, and it means impressiveness, dignity, earnestness. The ability to carry yourself with authority. The ability to express who you are in a way that other people listen to. And that doesn't mean speaking loud, it just means speaking with power. The work of Deborah Tannen, who is a sociolinguist in the US at Georgetown, basically says that there's a continuum. At one end is status. And if you think of the army, the police, they play status, they play hierarchy. And there's a certain set of behaviors that go with that. Then at the other end, there's connection and caring. People like me, coaches, nurses, are at the other end. We build connection. Now, what's interesting about this continuum is you can move up and down it. But the big message is, know what you are, know who does connection, know who does status, and find your flexibility. So, this is a model called Cats and Dogs. And it's based on Michael Grinder's work, who took Deborah Tannen's ideas and made a really practical strategy to help us flex between connection and status. Now, I had a client recently who really needed to become more cat-like. He had a big comms plan to present, and he knew his finance director was so not going to like it. And he had to walk into quite a senior board meeting and present this. And so I and another coach worked on his mindfulness, his presence, his catness, his gravitas. And he walked into this meeting, and everything he had feared happened. His finance director basically shot down everything he said. But he did something really interesting. He had resolution. He really held his ground. He was respectful and graceful. He listened, because you can't speak well unless you listen well. But then he said what he thought. And slowly in this meeting, he saw people come round. And though the finance director is never going to be his greatest supporter and probably never necessarily going to agree, he started to listen. So it made a very big difference. And what was he doing? He was being more formal. He'd done a bit of pre-work. He'd done a bit of uh, you know, reconnaissance before the meeting. He'd gone to talk to people. He focused on respect in that meeting. He knew the chain of command, and he played the hierarchy. And he, in that meeting, was resolute. He gave the consequences of not doing this thing that he thought they should do. He explained why it was a risk not to do it. So it can work. And he was consistent. He stuck to his guns gracefully. And there's something very powerful in that if you know when to flex. So we've got to be more focused on people in the room. We've got to learn to listen more than we do. And not listen to interrupt, but listen to understand, which is a very different kind of listening. I'm thinking what you're thinking, I'm feeling what you're feeling, and I'm wondering how I can help. Three kinds of empathy. Be totally, fully present. Turn off the Blackberry, turn off the iPhone, turn off the Mac, listen. And I would even say get there 10 minutes early and sit quietly and get really, really present. When someone says something powerful, acknowledge it with an emotional, with a kind of appreciative response. Say how it makes you feel. Because as cats, we like to live in analysis. Dogs like to be in feeling often. Ask favors rather than telling. So sell vocally more than telling. And be more informal, be more fluid in your delivery, in your style, in the way you interact. In my story about James, he noticed that softness going on. He noticed that his FD was starting to listen to him. And he realized that something had shifted in their relationship, and not just in that relationship. Because as he left the meeting and walked out, he realized that someone else was with him. It was his boss. He said, well done for that meeting. It was great. You know, there are six jobs going in the reorg. Which one do you want? So he'd seen a shift, he'd seen something different, and that can have massive professional rewards. Thank you.